work done by non-conservative forces. The new formula I taught you, let's use this to answer the question that was on the previous screen. Now, we're going to read this question together. And I know if you read the question, it doesn't actually tell you that you must use that formula that I just showed you. But for the sake of practicing how to use that formula and how it works, I want you to pretend that the question is forcing you to use that formula. You may use the work energy theorem as well to answer this question, but we're going to use the work done by non-conservative forces formula. So let's read the question. A 70 kilogram skateboarder skates down a slope. Now, this is a very badly drawn photo. I don't see a skateboarder. You have to use your imagination. And the skateboarder experiences a frictional force of 190 Newton. They give me the magnitude of the frictional force. They give me the angle of the slope. And they say that the skateboarder covers a distance of 10 meters between points A, which is here at the top of the slope, and B, which is here at the bottom. The speed of the skateboarder at A is 6 meters per second. So we can't assume that the skateboarder was initially stationary. They tell me that there's an initial velocity. My first question is quite simple and straightforward. Don't overcomplicate it. Calculate the gravitational potential energy of the skateboarder at A. Now, if they ask you a question that is straightforward, as straightforward as calculate the gravitational potential energy, I want you for a second to look at your formula sheet with me. You should know that to calculate gravitational potential energy, we need to use this formula over here. Your teacher might, instead of EP, use the symbol U. It's the same formula, essentially. Now, let's, let's see. I know that EP, gravitational potential energy, also appears in other formulas. For example, work done by non-conservative forces formula. But if you're deciding for this particular question, which formula to use, think about the most simple one first. So if we start with EP, equals mgh. Can I calculate potential energy using this formula? Do I have enough variables? Well, yes, I know the mass of the skateboarder is 70 kilograms. I know gravitational acceleration is 9.8. Okay, it will always be 9.8. That is on your data sheet. Then I need the height. Now remember, to calculate the gravitational potential energy at A, A is up here. I care about the height of A above the ground. This is my height. I do not for this question care about how long or how far the skateboarder was skating for. I care about gravitational potential energy, which is height above the ground. How can I find this H? They don't give it to me. So if you think about it quickly, take a look at the diagram, take a look at what you have. We know that this is a perpendicular height, so this must be a 90 degree angle. We have the hypotenuse of the slope as 10 meters. We also have that the, the incline of the slope is 30. So we can do trigonometry. What we basically have is a little right angled triangle like that. There's my 30. This is my 10. I'm looking for this over here. So I can use which trig ratio do you think would be appropriate? Well, I'm looking for what is opposite the 30 degrees. So sin or sine would be the most appropriate. Now, how would you work out H? Let's do it over here on the side. Sin of 30 is equal to what is sin opposite? So what is opposite the T? H opposite over adjacent. What is it? Sorry, opposite over hypotenuse. Oh my word, I'm losing my mind. We're not talking about tan. So sin is opposite H over hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is 10. Now, how do you get H by itself? Take the 10 over, it becomes 10 sin 30 is H. And if you work that out on your calculator, you actually get 5. So the height is 5 meters. You can either write 5 here or you can write out 10 sin 30. It doesn't matter. And that leaves me with my potential energy of 3, 4, 3, 0 joules. Easy as pie. Then calculate the speed of skateboarder at B. Now, I know the question doesn't tell you or force you to use this formula, but I want you to, okay? Just to practice. So if you want to pause the screen, try it, make use of this formula to answer this question, let's go for it. So remember, this formula uses the work done by non-conservative forces. So my steps when answering these questions is if you want to use this formula, decide, do we have non-conservative forces? So I'm going to say non-conservative forces with a question mark. We need to determine if we have non-conservative forces. If we read our story, we saw that there is a frictional force. And remember, as soon as there's a frictional force, friction is a non-conservative force. So remember, our non-conservative forces, the ones that we listed in the previous videos, were friction. We do have friction. If applied... And we have tension. Those are three. In my scenario, yes, I have friction. Do I have an applied force? So there's a skateboarder sliding down the slope. Is there a force that is being applied to the skateboarder? 
no. There is no force being applied to the skateboarder. So nope, there's no applied force. Think of it as there's nobody pushing the skateboarder. There's nobody pulling the skateboarder. There's no engine on the skateboard. The skateboarder isn't using his feet or his legs in this instance. Think about a skateboarder just simply standing on his or her skateboard. So in this instance, there's no if applied. And you might be thinking, but ma'am, if there's no if applied, how is the skateboarder getting down the slope? Well, remember, there's gravity acting on the skateboarder. So if I were to draw a free body diagram, which is not necessary, remember when I draw free body diagrams, I like to draw my slope in, in pencil and then I erase it afterwards. I would draw gravity, FG, acting straight down. There would be a normal force and the skateboarder is going this way. The skateboarder is sliding down the slope. So friction would be going up the slope like this. That would be friction. So there's a normal force. There's gravity. And remember... I can break up that gravitational force into components. There's FG perpendicular and this one over here, FG parallel. It is FG parallel, this little force over here, the components of FG that is pulling the skateboarder down the slope. There's no applied force. Okay, so no applied force and no tension because it's not like the skateboard is connected to something else with a rope or something like that. Okay, so basically what I'm trying to say is when doing this formula, the work done by non-conservative forces in this case is basically the work done by friction. If we had an applied force, then we would say work done by if applied as well. And if we had tension, we would add work done by tension as well. And then we would continue with the rest of the equation. But in our case, we don't have applied force. We don't have tension. So the work done by non-conservative forces is the work done by friction. And how do I further break up that formula? Work done by friction. Remember, we say work done by friction is equal to, just as a reminder, that's my formula for work. So how do I break down work done by friction? It would be the frictional force, the displacement, cause of the angle. Okay, so I break this down further like that. And then change in kinetic energy, as discussed in the previous video, is my final kinetic energy minus my initial kinetic energy like that. So that is my change in kinetic energy plus change in potential energy, my final potential energy minus my initial potential energy like that. Now, let's go back to the question. We want the speed of skateboarder at B. Now I know they say speed, but you should know that an alternative word essentially, if I want to simplify it for speed is velocity. So we have been given the initial velocity of the skateboarder, so the velocity at A, which is VI, we want VF, the final speed or the, the, the final velocity of the skateboarder at B. So this is what we're looking for. My ultimate goal, my ultimate prize in this sum is to solve for VF. That means that we should be able to substitute everything else in, hopefully. Let's take a look. Remember, this work done by non-conservative forces, the only non-conservative force is friction. So to calculate the work done by friction, we need the frictional force, which was given to me in the question, 190. Remember, when you calculate the work done by friction, you don't sub in friction as negative. You always sub it in as a positive. Then displacement. How far did this person skate down the slope? This person skated 10 meters down the slope. 10 meters. Then, what is my angle? Well, if the person is skating down the slope, my displacement is down the slope, but friction always is in the opposite direction of the motion. What is that angle? That's a straight line. So my angle is 180. I hope you can see that. My skateboarder is going this way, but friction is always going to act in the opposite direction. Look at my free body diagram. So that means that we will add in over here, cos 180. And that cos 180, this is what is going to make this whole thing here become negative. Okay, that's why we don't sub a negative in here as well. Then half, what is the mass of the skateboarder? 70 kilograms. So half of 70. Remember we said we are looking for the final velocity, so we leave it. Then half, the mass again is 70. The initial velocity, that's the velocity at A, we said was 6. My initial velocity is 6. 6 squared. Plus, then again, my mass, I'm going to start running out of space. So I'm going to do this bracket. I'm going to do it underneath over here. My mass is 70. Gravitational acceleration is 
my final height over here, look where B is. B is on the ground. So my final height is zero. Minus, now we worked out this initial kinetic energy. Sorry, potential energy. If you can remember, we worked that out here. Three, four, three, zero. Three, four, three, zero. If you want to, you can substitute in again. So you can say the mass is 70, G is 9.8, and the initial height is 5. Or you can just put 3430 because we did it in a previous question. Now all we need to do is the maths. And sometimes learners struggle with this. So I'm just going to show you step by step how I do it. So I work out this. Then over here, I say half of 70 is 35. So 35 VF squared minus, I work out all of this, gets me 1, 2, 6, 0, then plus, here's a plus, then this is going to end up being 0, minus 3, 4, 3, 0. So I'm going to simplify the left-hand side. I've got neg uh, the le uh, left-hand side is simplified. Let's simplify the right-hand side. So like terms. Then I'm going to get the VF squared by itself. So first thing, this is negative 4690. The inverse operation is going to be plus. So you take it over, it becomes plus. We then divide by 35, dividing both sides by 35. Okay, I'm just continue, continuing the sum over here. And then my final step is to square root the 79 comma comma. Remember, don't round off till the end. My final velocity, final speed, 8,93 meters per second because the question wanted speed. They wanted the speed at B. Speed, I don't need a direction. If it said velocity at B, then I would say 8,93 meters per second down the slope. I hope that makes sense. And then just one last thing. So if I had to ask you to calculate the final speed of an object like this being pulled across the floor, um, you could use the same formula. Remember, work done by non-conservative forces is the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy. But in this scenario now, we now have two non-conservative forces. Applied force, someone is pulling the box, and there's friction. So this would be the work done by F applied plus the work done by friction. And then you would carry on with the next rest of the sum like normal. So you have to just add up all the non-conservative forces on this side of the equation. I really, really hope that that helps and it makes more sense how to use the work done by non-conservative forces formula. Remember to subscribe for more videos like this. Let me know in the comments what you want to see and check out the rest of the work energy power playlist linked down below. Subscribe for more. Bye everyone.